these are the tips that you didn't know you needed. The tips that could just speed up your workflow, the tips that could just take away certain frustrations that you've probably been having. And more importantly, these are the tips that you're gonna find that you're gonna end up using a lot, not just some tips that was cool to just know about, but this is gonna really be a part of your workflow. For this tip, sometimes it could be annoying to have the metronome on at times, and you don't wanna always just have to go to the metronome and then you know switch it to off and stuff like that. You could easily do shift and play start, and you'll see that it will jump by itself. So I could be on this screen and you know shift and play start to play it. In the middle of the plane, I could decide that I wanna have it off. Now another thing that can be annoying is if you're in sample edit mode and let's say you're trying to edit a sample and you see this screen keep popping up at the side and this gets very annoying especially when you're trying to get like at this part and you can't see it. So the way you would get rid of that is just by holding down the Q link and then it will be highlighted show Q link status when touch and we want it to be off. So now when it's off, we could then move around freely and even in the grid view or any screen you at, you're able to just scroll without having to see it. Now, if you don't remember what your cue links are, you can just hold down the cue link button and read it from here, or you can just turn it back on when you need it and then turn it back off when you don't. Now this tip right here is definitely a game changer. Let's say, you know, we have our melody going. But then, you know, you wanna kind of figure out other chops that you can do. So you're just messing around and then you probably come across something that you like, but then you remember that you didn't save. But the NBC has a feature where it keeps the history of what you played. All you have to do to access it is just do shift and record. And it's called retrospective record. And then if you go to your grid view, then you will see now it's over here. Now let's say you only had a short amount of bars. Let's say it was only four bars that you have. And then when you scroll over, it's dark and you can't see it. All you have to do is just go to the last queue link and then use the second knob to add in those bars and then you're able to see what you recorded. And the history refreshes itself every time you record something. For this tip right here, it's definitely essential to keep organized and also this save a lot of time. And that's when you go to your browser and right here at the top, you can see I have folder shortcuts. So for the third one, I have my beats. For the second, I have my drum kits. And the first one is just everything. And then the fourth one is just like samples. So you can organize it the way you want to. And all you have to do to do this is just go to your folder that you want a shortcut to. Let's say this go to drum kit right here. I could hold down shift and I could press any of these folders. Now for the next tip, this is some sauce right here, man, for your drums. So if we go to main and let's just hear our drums real quick. So it's a regular hi-hat pattern. Now we could spice it up with some rolls and we could just go to our note repeat and if you double tap it, then it stays by itself so you don't have to hold it down and we can switch the timing. But the sauce is to also use 16 levels and use the tune feature because now we can have the rolls and we can have the tune at the same time and you can still use your note repeat at any time division. This is definitely very useful when making trap beats because a lot of the times these rolls be in different pitches. Now this next tip is more about a more efficient way of doing things. So let's go to shift and menu. I'm gonna just pull up an 808 that's in a different key. So this is in the key of F as you can see. Now I'm just gonna load it. Now I could go to sample edit mode. Now let's say we wanna sync it with our project. So most of the time you would just go to sample edit, go to the second screen, and then you see if it's at F, you want to tune it back down to C. But for those that are a beginner, a faster way could just be to change the root note and you'll be in the key of your song. Now for this next tip, it's very, very important because it's going to save you a lot of time and frustration for figuring this out. Let's say, for example, you have a program that you just want to be tracked out. In this instance, it's the drums. The way you would track out anything in your program, meaning that having it on each track, you could go to the pencil tool and then you could go to explode. Now it will put this track in mute, but now all my drums will be on its own track. And then you know we finishing up the beat and then we have all of our sequence laid out and we go to export and you don't see the option to explode tracks right here to have the stems for when you export it. That's because you don't get that feature by being in song mode. You actually get that feature by, if we go to menu and saving it and go to audio mix down. Now we will have exploded tracks 
and we could just highlight that and then we could save it and then we'll have our stems. Now you may be thinking, well, that's only for the sequence that you on and that's correct. It's only for this sequence that I'm on. But what you can do is go to menu, go back to your song, convert this whole sequence because remember, it only works for the sequence that you're on, right? And then you go to main. Now we have our whole song on sequence seven. So then we could go to menu, save, and then audio mix down. And that will be our whole song. And you can see the bars up here. Now for this tip right here, I just have to throw it in, man, just for any beginner right now, because I know when I was first starting out, I was trying to figure this out and it was so annoying. And that is to loop your samples while you're in sample edit mode so you know you're getting the right chop. We gotta hit the pad 16 because that's what loops the sample. Very useful for beginners, man. Now this tip right here is definitely essential for your workflow because let's say, you know, we have a beat right here. And let's say I want to mess around and come up with other piano melodies, but you don't want to hear the other piano in the background. So, you know, usually you probably would just mute the track and then go to another track and then, you know, put the piano plug in on there and go through all of that. But you don't have to do all of that. All you have to do is just go to where it says track, where it says auto. You want to keep clicking until it says in. And then what that does is it mute the MIDI, but it doesn't mute the sound. So we could take this off of mute and now we can play around. And that way you can still be creative and then keep an efficient workflow. Now there's a lot more tips like this and you can find that in my ebook. If you're not aware, I do have an ebook of all the YouTube shorts combined in this volume one of the ebooks. It keeps it organized and efficient to search up what you need very quickly versus going through all the YouTube shorts. So you could definitely check that out. Link will be in the description. Thanks for watching.